Informational Bible study is probably the most commonly used type of Bible study in churches for group study. We have three basic informational methods through which we study scripture, historical, literary, and theological. Now in this session, we're going to look at reading scripture through the lens of history. Now the historical approach begins with the recognition that the Bible is an ancient text written by people who lived in times and places that are very different from our own. Now, in order to understand the plain meaning of the text, we must know something about these people, places, and times. What was the original situation and intention of the author? What was the historical and social world that this text was written into? Once we can determine some of that, we are, through analogy, able to understand how the, the text now addresses us in our own times. What are the parallel situations or issues that are at play? Now, for instance, one of the ways to approach this is, let's look at the opening of the prophet Amos, saying, in the days of King Uzziah of Judah and the days of King Jeroboam of Israel, well, just that information and setting tells us something about the situation to which the prophet is speaking. Because we know that this is after the kingdom has divided in two. We know King Uzziah lived around 750 BC, and that helps us determine what is going on during this time period. Now, archeological evidence confirms that the reign of Jeroboam II was one of the most prosperous and lavish times for the Northern Kingdom of Israel. The market with the Assyrians and the Egyptians in wine and olive oil and most likely horses proved to be very lucrative. And Jeroboam II had been quite successful in battle as well, extending Israel to its former limits and was one of the most densely populated areas in the entire Levant region. So it is into this situation that we hear the calls of the prophet Amos, that the triumphs of the king had engendered a haughty spirit of boastful overconfidence at home, that the internal fruits of Israel's external triumphs had resulted in oppression and exploitation of the poor by the mighty, luxury and palaces of unheard of splendor and a craving for amusement. Amos, among other prophets, condemned the materialism and the selfishness of the Israelite elite of their day. Not to mention the continued support of the temples at Bethel and Dan and various other ancient sites that had set up golden calves as idols in their worship of the God of Israel. With that information in mind, we can then think about similar situations in our own country, in our own time, and consider if God might be issuing to us the same prophetic calls for justice and faithfulness. Historical approaches to Bible study invite us to concentrate on who, what, why, and where questions. What insights from history would be helpful to know in order to hear, read, study, or understand the plain meaning of this passage more accurately? So some questions we might ask. What do we know about the author of the passage? Do we know to or for whom this passage was written? Who was the audience? Why was this text written or what situation is being addressed? When was this text written? And what do we know about that period of time in history? Where was this text written? And what do we know about that part of the ancient world? What implied political and social realities were at play that could shed light on this text? How is this text similar to other ancient stories or texts that might shed light on its meaning? What things do we know about the ancient world that might help us to read and understand this text? Now the reality is, most of us did not study the Bible with a room full of historical, political, and social experts. So how do you study the Bible historically? Well, here are a few suggestions. Number one, be clear about what questions you have and then recognize that all of those questions are going to have answers that we can possibly know. Number two, folks with training, such as pastors, teachers, and professors, can often be helpful. But let's face it, even scholars aren't right all the time. We learn new things just like you do that can cause us to change our minds about things we thought we knew. And scholars are often known to disagree. The more we discover, however, the less we are certain about what we know. And reality is our own biases have some effect on how we think and what we think we know. 
And while this may seem confusing, this often deepens the meaning of a text in ways that are beyond our imagining. So yeah, ask folks with training to join the conversation. Number three, if you don't have that readily available, find some good resources. Perhaps start with a good study Bible. Ones I would recommend are, of course, the Lutheran Study Bible, as well as a Bible called the Learning Study Bible. Unfortunately, I think the Learning Study Bible may no longer be in print, so it may be harder to find. Number four, ask your pastors for commentaries. Trust me, we have a wide variety of commentaries available on any given text or topic in our offices, and we are happy to share them with our parishioners. Number five, use the internet. Don't know who King Uzziah was? Google him. Now just be careful. Do some fact checking. There's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, and believe it or not, not all of it's true or reliable information. So read more than one article to see if there's different information out there, or what some of the differing interpretations or views might be. Now at the end of this session, you'll be given some example Bible studies to go through that focuses on the historical method of study I encourage you to do this together in your small group, but you can also do it on your own. These passages will also be utilized as study material for the other methods of informational study as well.